just number 17. That's it? We'll be good if we do 17? Number eight? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this problem has a cos theta in it and a sine theta in it. So are we solving with square roots or are we solving by factoring? We're going to solve by factoring. So uh, I'm going to make this problem equal zero. Would you guys rather take the stuff and move it to the right side or take the stuff and move it to the left side? Right side? Okay. It doesn't matter on this problem. It's going to work out about the same either way. Okay, so we've got zero equals... 2 cos theta sine theta minus root 3 cos theta. So what we're dealing with is something that looks like this. It's like 2xy minus root 3x. Okay, that's basically what we're dealing with, factoring. So if we look at this, we can tell there's obviously nothing in common with the numbers. We've got two variables happening here, one variable happening here. So if you look at the two different terms that we're dealing with, can you see what's in common? You're going to take out the cosine. That's the thing that's in common. No numbers in common, just the cos is in common. Just like over here, it's like having the x in common. So we would take the cos out. And it's going to leave behind the number for each term. And for the first term, it's going to leave behind the other variable. So for the first term, you take the cos out, it leaves behind 2 sine theta. For the second term, you take the cos out, it leaves the root 3 behind. So if we were solving this over here, we know that the factor in the front equals what? 0, x equals 0, okay? So cos theta equals zero. And then this factor has two numbers. So if we've got two numbers from the factor, what happens with those two numbers? Yeah, it becomes a fraction, right? So we're going to change the sign. Just like normal, we're going to do the opposite sign. So y equals positive root 3. And then we make it a fraction, so we're going to say over 2. So when we do this one, we're going to say sine theta equals positive root 3 over 2. And then this is a nice one. That fraction is exactly what we would expect to see on the unit circle. Uh, and so we can use it as is. So we've got our theta is cos inverse of 0 and sine inverse of root 3 over 2. Okay, so cos inverse of 0, we're looking for an x coordinate on the unit circle of 0. Where's an x coordinate of 0? pi halves and three pi halves, okay? And then sine inverse is gonna be a y coordinate. Where is there a y coordinate of root three over two? Pi thirds and two pi thirds, okay? And then we also had a request to look at number eight. Number eight looks pretty long, so negative two cos theta sine theta. 
minus 3 sine theta equals cos theta minus 3 sine theta. Okay, we got a bunch of cos thetas and sine thetas. So is this going to be a problem where we take square roots or a problem where we factor? It's a problem where we factor. So that means we need to make it equal zero. So you can either take this stuff and move it over to the right side or you can take this stuff and move it over to the left side. Move it to the left? Okay, so I'm gonna subtract off the cos theta. And I'm gonna add three sine theta. So that is zero now. And then three sine theta and three sine theta, those cancel out. So we have negative two cos theta sine theta minus cos theta. So if we think of this as just regular variables, this would be like negative 2xy minus x equals 0. So if we're going to factor this, we don't have anything in common with the numbers. We have like a 2 and like a 1 here. But we do have negatives with both of these, so we are going to pull out a negative. And then what about with the variables? We have a cos in common. We have the same variable for both of the terms. So we're going to take a negative out because we have that the same, and then we have a cos that's the same. So I'm going to take out negative cos, and then I'm going to write my leftovers. So I took out the negative. I took out the cos. That leaves me with a 2, and it leaves me with a sine. And then for the second term, negative cos is exactly what the second term is. So we just need to figure out what is negative cos divided by negative cos. It's 1. And it's a positive 1. So I'm going to write plus 1. And we can kind of think of that as a placeholder. So you can't say, oh, I have a negative cos and I took out a negative cos, so I write nothing. You have to write something there so that when you distribute this back in, you get the original problem. So positive 1 is the placeholder you put there so that when you distribute it back in, you do get the original. Uh, so over here, this would be like taking out a negative x. And then what we would get is 2y and a positive 1. OK, so if we were to solve this for factoring, the term in the front always gives you what for factoring? It always gives you 0, x equals 0. So for us, our term in the front, even though it's a negative cos, we're still going to be getting that cos theta gives us 0. The coefficient doesn't make any difference for that solution. So cos theta is going to give us 0. Over here, this y would give us what solution? negative one half so we're going to change the sign negative one divided by two negative one half and so over here sine theta would give us negative one divided by two so if we solve these on the unit circle we're going to find that theta is cos inverse of zero and sine inverse of negative one half and we just did that in the previous problem, so we know that that's pi halves and 3 pi halves. So we don't need to do that again. Okay. And then over here, we're going to look at the unit circle and find a y-coordinate for sine, a y-coordinate that is negative 1 half. A y-coordinate that is negative 1 half. And 11 pi 6. Okay. Are we good? How do we feel about factoring and square roots? Are they as terrible as they look? They look terrible, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. The square root ones we like best. They're better than the factoring ones. So how do we tell the difference between a factoring problem and a square root problem? And if it's, if they're like separate, like if there's one of one, 
Okay, so if there's more than one variable, so if there's a cos and a sine, if there's like two different trig functions, it's gonna be factoring for sure, okay? How do we know it's for sure taking square roots? If there's one, and what is the one gonna look like? It's gonna be squared. If it's just tan squared, or if it's just cos squared. No, it'd be one or the other. So you could have multiple trig functions, but they'd have to both be the same and they'd have to both be squared. So you could have like a tan squared on the left side of the equation and a tan squared on the right side of the equation. And then somehow in the problem as you solve it, you'd end up getting them together because they're like terms. So you could get them together. Um, but you'd notice, you'd be like, oh, it's the same trig function and they're both squared. So we're gonna end up taking square roots. So that problem kind of looks like it might be factoring because it ends up having multiple of the trig functions, but it's just really a square root problem in disguise. Yeah, okay. All right, so we feel okay about those. So if those are ready to turn in, go ahead and turn them in. They need to be turned in today to get the full credit or to be turned in without a late pass. Okay, so today we're gonna look at calculator trig equations. So um, I know some desks have all the calculators that we need, but then some desks, the calculators have uh, migrated. So I know there's like a calculator back there, there's a calculator back there. Um, let's make sure everybody has a calculator before we get started. So go ahead and grab the calculator you're gonna be using this period and then go ahead and clear the memory on that calculator. Make sure the calculator has battery power. So clear the memory, second plus seven, one, two. And then for today, I'm gonna to ask you to have two colors to do your notes in, two colors. I'm using two little markers. Uh, there's colored pencils in the back. You can also use colored pens that you have. I'm gonna ask you to have two colors. Two colors. All right, so go ahead and start writing this on your notes. Before we do true problems that have to be done with the calculator, we're gonna start with problems that we know that can be done with the unit circle. So we're gonna solve sine theta equals root two over two. And if you look at your unit circle, there are two places where you have the y coordinate being root two over two. Where are those two places? Pi fourths and three pi fourths. Okay, so pi fourths is right here. 
Here is pi fourths. So there's root two over two. So there's your theta. And then the other place is right over here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this works if we were doing it on a calculator, because if we were doing it on a calculator, we know that there should be two answers. If we're finding, I'm going to write some instructions over here, we're going to say solve on 0 to 2 pi. So if the instructions are to say solve on 0 to 2 pi and we're using a unit circle, that's easy. All I have to do is use my eyes to look at the unit circle and I can clearly see with my eyes there are two answers, okay? But if we're doing this exact same problem, square root 2 divided by 2 is this decimal, okay, 0 0.707. So if I'm doing this exact same problem as a calculator problem, and somebody gives me this as the original problem, and they say solve this problem with a decimal, and I don't know that that decimal equals a problem that I could solve with the unit circle, so I have no idea I could be using my unit circle and my eyes to solve this problem, then I would have to solve it by hand and I would have to use my calculator. So I would go through the steps, I would take sine inverse, and I would say, all right, theta equals sine inverse of 0.707, and I would go through and I would say, all right, second sign of 0 0.707. And I would not get two answers. I would only get one answer. But we know from the unit circle how many answers are there. There are two answers. So what I'm going to teach you today is if the calculator gives you one answer, how do you find the second one? Does that make sense? Because there are always two answers, always. But the calculator will never give you the second one you have to understand how the math works so that you can find the second one. Does that make sense? Okay, so the way that the calculator works is with sine, and there are three different shortcuts to find these. With sine, the calculator is going to give you that first quadrant answer if you are looking for the answer of a positive decimal. Okay, it's going to give you that first quadrant answer. So if we look at this, we just did sine inverse of root 2 over 2, and we know that first answer should be pi fourths. And if we compare it, oh, this is pi fourths. So what we just found is that first quadrant answer. But we know that 3 pi fourths is the other answer. The other answer is over here. It should be this angle. So what you'll see is that there's some symmetry over here, that this angle right here, and this is where I'm going to use my marker, this angle right here is actually exactly the same as this angle right here. Everyone see that? Those are the exact same angles. So if this decimal right here is 0.785, then that means that this decimal over here is also 0 0.785. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, we don't measure angles from this part of the line, do we? We don't measure them that way. We start over here and we measure them this way. That's how we measure them. So I found the 0.785, that is the first answer. The blue that I just drew is the second answer. Anyone know how I could find the second answer? What's a straight line in radians? 180 is in degrees. What is it in radians? Pi. So a straight line is pi in radians. I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to do the whole straight line pi, and I'm going to subtract off that decimal, and that's going to give me the blue angle. Does that make sense? I'm going to take the whole straight line pi, I'm going to subtract off that angle, and it's going to give me the second angle. It's going to give me the blue part. So this blue is going to be 
Uh, let me draw it this way. Pi minus 0.785. That's how I get my second answer. So I got my first answer. Theta is approximately 0.785. And then for my second answer, I'm going to do pi minus. And then I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to go up here and grab the first answer and press Enter. So it's copy pasting that decimal. Pi minus that first answer, 2.356. And if you look, 2.356, 3 pi fourths is 3 pi fourths. Those are the two answers that if we had done this as a unit circle problem, we would have seen those two answers with our eyes. Does that make sense? Okay. So now let's try this with a problem that we actually couldn't have done with our eyes because it's not a unit circle problem. So let's try this if we did sine theta equals 0.38. So what should I do? Okay, so I'm going to say theta equals sine inverse of 0.38. Sine inverse of 0.38. So that's going to give me 0 0.389. 89 is followed by a 7. So if 89 is followed by a 7, how do I round that? I round it up to 90. So I'm going to say my first answer is 0.390. And then how do I find my second answer? I'm going to do pi minus the answer I just got. 2.752. And I'm going to write in my notes that this is pi minus 0.390. Two answers. Okay. How do your brains feel about that? Good? That makes sense? Okay. Now, if I want to check those answers and make sure that they are right, I can just type this in. I can type in sine, and of course, this is going to have some. Um, rounding errors because I took something that was a really long decimal and I cut it off after three um, decimal places. But if I do sine of 0.390, I should get approximately 0.38. And I do, I get a, approximately 0.38. And then if I do sine of 2.752, I should get approximately 0.38. And I do, I get approximately 0.38. So it's really easy to check those answers and make sure they're right. All right, brain still good? Okay, now we want to also check and make sure that we can do the same thing, um, but with some angles that are not positive. So what, what happens if we are not in the first quadrant? What happens if we're doing sine, but we have negative y values instead? So again, we're gonna start with unit circle values. So I'm gonna say sine theta equals uh, negative root three over two. Sine theta equals negative root 3 over 2. So let's draw a little sketch of this. Okay. So what is the answer for sine theta equals negative root 3 over 2? Say it again. It's the thirds. Which third is it? Yeah, it's four thirds and five thirds. Okay, so five pi thirds right here, four pi thirds right here. Okay, so let's do this on our calculator and let's see how the calculator is going to give us the answer, okay? Because that's going to be important. So I'm going to do sine inverse of, actually, let's go back. I want to see what the decimal is because we're working in decimals today. So I'm going to do sine theta 
equals negative root 3 over 2. Let's see what that decimal is. Negative root 3 over 2. Negative 0.866. Okay. Okay, so we know the answers. We already found them with our eyes. Now we're going to go back. We're going to find them with our calculator. So sine inverse of negative 0.866. Okay, negative 1.047. So theta uh, equals sine inverse of negative 0.866. And the answer that I got is negative 1.047. Okay. Now, we said in our original instructions that the answer had to be between 0 and 2 pi. Is this answer between 0 and 2 pi? It is not. Okay? So what this problem just did is it just measured this, but it measured it negatively. It measured down 1.047, negative 1.047. That's what it did. Anyone have a guesstimate about what number you think this is in radians? if it measured negatively for us? We know this is 5 pi thirds. It measured negatively. It should be negative pi thirds. Let's double check and see if that's what it is. Negative pi thirds. Okay, so that's what it did. It gave us the negative version of the answer. Okay? All right, so if they told us that our answer had to be between 0 and 2 pi, what should we do to our answer to give them the answer that they really wanted? We should add 2 pi to it. We're going to find the coterminal angle. So I'm going to add 2 pi to this answer to make it positive so that the answer is between 0 and 2 pi. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to say take that negative angle. I'm going to add 2 pi so that I get the appropriate answer that they're looking for. So now that I added 2 pi to this, what answer should it be at this point? It should be 5 pi thirds now. So now if I check it, 5 pi thirds, that's what I just found, 5 pi thirds. Are we all comfortable with that? We can see exactly what's happening. Okay, so now I'm going to say this, I'm going to do plus 2 pi. So this is... Uh, 5.236. That's the answer that they wanted. Okay? We added the 2 pi because in the original instructions, I'm always going to ask you to solve on 0 to 2 pi. So if we get a negative answer, we can't leave a negative answer because a negative answer is not between 0 and positive 2 pi. So we just added a full circle to it. We said, oh, if they gave us an answer that was negative pi thirds, we can't use that as our final answer. We have to add a full circle to it and get the answer that is 5 pi thirds. It's in the same spot, but it's on the interval the way they asked it of us. So if I get a negative answer, which is going to happen anytime you have that negative decimal, it's going to give you a negative answer every time. So you're going to have to think through and go, oh, they gave us a negative answer because this was a negative decimal. We had negative 0.866. Let me go ahead and add a full circle to get that positive answer. Okay. Now, they also are going to have that negative 1.047 on this side because it only gives us one answer, right? Now, the nice thing is the shortcut is the same. The shortcut is the same. So if we think about how would I get my second answer, I want to have a whole pi plus a little bit more, right? What happens if I do pi minus negative pi thirds? I'm going to get four pi thirds. If I have pi minus 
negative pi thirds, I get four pi thirds. Do you guys agree with that? So even though this is a negative, it's not going to take away from the pi. It's actually going to add to the pi. So pi minus negative pi thirds using the exact same shortcut we had up here, pi minus the angle, it actually has that double negative, which means it adds the angles together, which is what we want. Does that make sense? So pi minus negative pi thirds, and this is exactly, pi thirds is exactly how far away from the line you are. It is down pi thirds from the line. Pi minus pi thirds is going to get us to this angle right here. So we're actually going to do the exact same shortcut we did before to get the second angle. Okay? So for this one, I'm going to do pi minus, and I'm going to go back up to this angle right up here that I solved for first, negative 1.047. I'm going to get my second angle here. Pi minus negative 1.047. And that's my second angle, 4.189. 4.189. And if you double check this one, that second angle is 4 pi thirds. So this second one is pi minus negative 1.047. And this one is negative 1.047 plus 2 pi. Okay. How do your brains feel right now? We feel good? So there's one shortcut for sine to find the second answer. We do pi minus the first answer pi minus the first answer. Okay. All right, let's do a problem that is not a unit circle problem. So we're going to say sine theta equals negative 0.73. All right, so what do I do? Inverse, okay, so theta equals sine inverse of negative 0.73. And what sign is the first answer going to be? I already know. Is it going to be positive or negative? It's going to be negative. This is a negative decimal, so it's going to give me a negative answer because this is a negative y-coordinate. So negative y-coordinates go down. Our two angles are going to be in quadrants 3 and 4. Negative y coordinates mean we're going to have answers in quadrants 3 and 4. So I'm going to do sine inverse is negative 0.73. I got a negative answer. I don't want a negative answer. So what am I going to do with my negative answer to make sure it's on the interval I want it to be on? I'm going to add 2 pi to it. So this is what I started with, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 2 pi to that. So plus 2 pi. So this is my first actual answer, 5.465. So this is negative 0.818 plus 2 pi, that's my first answer. And then for my second answer, I use my shortcut. And what is my shortcut? Pi minus the original angle. So pi minus the original angle, pi minus the original angle is the second answer. So the second answer is 3.8. 9 and then 59 is followed by a 9. So what does 59 become? 60. 60. So 3.960. And this answer we found by doing pi minus the original decimal. There's our two answers. Okay. So... Second answer 
uh, for sine is pi minus first answer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make that really easy to find in my notes. Okay. Brains feel good? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to COS. Or would you guys like me to hand out a worksheet and let you try a couple of those? Yes. Okay, let me hand out the worksheet. Okay, so we're, we're about to see why the shortcuts are different. So for this one, we're gonna say, okay, COS theta is root three over two. And if we look at the unit circle, where is cos theta root 3 over 2? In 11 pi 6, do you guys see how the picture is different than it was last time? So... With sine, it's the y coordinates this, that are the same, and so the symmetry is different. With cos, it's the x coordinates that are the same. So with the y coordinates, we have the symmetry over the y axis. Here, the x coordinates are the same, so the symmetry is over the x axis, which is why the shortcuts are going to be different. So. We're doing root 3 over 2 again, so for this one we're going to say, okay, cos theta is that decimal 0.866 again. And I think we already know if we do cos inverse what degree measure or what angle measure in radians is it going to give us. Can you guys already predict it? What is it going to give us? Not the number, but which one? But when we do the inverse and it gives us the radian measure, which one of these two answers is it going to give us? Can you tell? It's going to give us the first one, right? It's going to give us a small decimal and it's going to give us this first one. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, theta is cos inverse of 0.866. I'm only going to get the first one. So cos inverse 0.866. Uh, 0.524, so theta is 0.524, and if I double check that, 0.524 is exactly the same as pi 6. Okay, so this is 0.524. Um, and so that means that this measurement is also 0.524. Those are the same. But when we measure angles 11 pi 6, we don't measure from here down to get 11 pi 6. We measure from here all the way around. That's how we get 11 pi 6. So if I want to get the decimal for 11 pi 6 on my calculator, how do you guys think I'm going to get the decimal for 11 pi 6? Not add. I'm going to subtract. What am I going to be subtracting? I'm going to take the full circle 2 pi, and I'm going to subtract off the decimal that I just had. So if I take the full circle 2 pi, and I subtract off the 1 sixth, then I get 11 pi 6, right? 2 pi, the full circle, subtract off 1 6, I get the 11 6. Or if I take 2 pi and subtract off 0 0.524, I'm going to get the decimal that I want. So my second answer is going to be 2 pi minus the first answer. 2 pi minus the first answer is going to give me the second answer. And if I compare that to 11 pi over 6, it's the same thing. So that's the shortcut for cos. 2 pi minus the first answer. Okay? So second answer is 2 pi minus the first answer. So over here we're going to say 2 pi minus 0.524. And that gives us 5 point, oops, 
seven, 59. 59 is followed by a five, so what should it be? 760, so 5.760. And this answer we got by doing two pi minus 0.524. Okay, so let's try one with another decimal. So we'll do cos theta equals 0.93. All right, so what should I do? I'm going to do cos inverse, cos inverse of 0.93, and I get. 0.376, okay, so I'm getting theta is approximately 0.376, okay, and then how am I going to get my second answer? Two pi minus my first answer, 5.907. Okay, two answers. Easy peasy. It's very similar. With sine, we did pi minus the first answer. With cos, we do two pi minus the first answer. Not quite. You gotta look at the pattern. If you, you can kind of tell, you might be able to figure it out if you look at where the answers repeat for tan. So it's all about where answers repeat, how the pattern works for answers repeating, yeah. Okay, let's look at cos when we have negative answers just to make sure that it makes sense for us still. So if we have cos theta equals negative one half, uh, where do our negative one half answers show up? Not three pi fourths. So where's negative one half? So we got one right here. Okay, so two pi thirds and four pi thirds. Okay, so we've got to go through. So we know that cos theta equals negative 0.5, that's the decimal we've got. Okay. And let's see how it gives us the answers. Let's see if it's gonna give us a negative answer like sine did, or if it's gonna give us an answer we can actually have, okay? Because we wanna make sure that we understand how all these are working. So cos inverse of negative 0.5, it did not give us a negative. It gave us a positive answer. So that's good to know. So we have uh, cos inverse of negative 0.5. Theta is approximately 2.094. And let's just double check, is that the same as two pi thirds? That is exactly the same as two pi thirds. So what this just gave us is it just gave us this decimal right here. So 2.094. So that's 2.094. That means that this is also 2.094. Okay, so to get our second answer, what do we want to do? Yeah, this one's more straightforward than the sine one because the first answer works and the second answer makes a lot of sense. 2 pi, the full circle, minus 2.094. So I'm going to do 2 pi minus the first answer to get the second answer. For 
or 0.189 is just 2 pi minus 2.094. And let's double check and make sure that gives us 4 pi thirds. And it does. So when you're looking at cos and you're doing a negative problem, the first answer is good. And then the shortcut works exactly the same. So sine was a little bit difficult for the negative decimals. Cos is not a little bit difficult for the negative decimals. The negative decimals and the positive decimals are going to work exactly the same. No difficulties there. Okay? So let's try um, one that is not from the unit circle. So let's do... Cos theta is negative 5 eighths. I'm giving you a fraction, but does that change anything if it's a fraction? No, it's still like a decimal. It's just written in fraction form. Okay, so what should I do? Cos inverse. Okay, negative 5 eighths. Okay, so there is my first uh, theta my first radian measurement, so I got 2.246, okay? And how am I going to find the second one? 2 pi minus the one I just got, 4.037. Okay, uh, I'm going to let you guys work on some of the cos problems on the worksheet. Oop, before, actually, I'm going to write the shortcut up here. I forgot to write that. So, second answer. This needs to go on your blue sheet as well. Okay. All right. So we're saving the easiest one for last. All right, tan theta equals 1. We're still going to do 0 to 2 pi. All right, where does tan theta equal 1? Okay, pi fourths and 5 pi fourths. Okay, so if we say tan theta equals 1, this one isn't a decimal one, but we know uh, that if we were to go through the process and solve it, we would get theta equals tan inverse of 1. And if we did this on our calculator, tan inverse of 1 is... This decimal, which one do you think this decimal just gave us? Pi fourths, okay. So it gave us the pi fourths right here. And this one, um, I don't even really have to kind of show you how it's working, probably. Um, 0 0.785. Because I think you might already be able to see how we could get from one answer to the next. Uh, how far apart are these answers? They're pi apart. Tan answers are the nice ones because they're always, a, they're always down a straight line. Always. Every single time. Um, and so that means they are always a full pi away from each other. So if you have one tangent answer and you want the next tangent answer, you just add a full pi, you get the next one. And then you add a full pi, you get the next one. 
and then you add a full pie, you get the next one. And then you add a full pie, you get the next one. So if we want to get from this answer to this answer, we're just going to add pi. So 0 0.785, I'm going to just, in my calculator, hit plus, and it's going to pull that previous answer for me. And I'm going to plus pi, and that'll give me the next one. 3.927 And you'll see that 3.927 is 5 pi fourths. So this is the easiest one. Point 0.785 plus pi. Okay, I'm not even going to do another one with a different decimal because I think we're okay with this probably. Am I right? We're probably okay with that. Okay. Let's do a negative version. So if we have tan theta is negative root 3, where on the unit circle does the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate simplify to root 3? pi thirds and four pi thirds, right? Yes? Okay. So it's up here and down here, right? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Two pi thirds and five pi thirds then. It'd be this one. Okay, so left one half, up root three over two, right one half, down root three over two. Yes, okay. So two pi thirds and five pi thirds. Okay, so, and then if we look at this, negative root three is what decimal? Negative 1.732. Okay, so if we did tan inverse, or tan theta equals negative 1.732, so that we're working with decimals instead of working with our eyes on the unit circle, then let's go ahead and solve this one. So I'm going to do tan inverse of negative 1.732 tan inverse negative 1.732 and it gave me the negative angle and that's okay even though I'm not going to use that as my final answer because it's a negative angle I don't have to add 2 pi this time because I know how often do tan answers repeat how often do they repeat we learned it on the last problem nope how often do they repeat Every pi. We just add pi, add pi, add pi, add pi, add pi, add pi, add pi. If you want another tan answer, all you have to do is go to a straight line. So what this problem did is it probably gave us this one. It probably gave us negative pi thirds for the first answer. That's fine. Let's go ahead and add pi and get this answer. And then we can add pi and get this answer. Yeah. So it doesn't matter which one you write down first. You're still going to get both of them. We're just going to get them out of order, and that's not a big deal, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write down the one that they gave us. So we did tan inverse of negative 1.732, and that was theta, and we ended up getting that theta was negative 1.047, and that is negative pi thirds, I'm guessing. Yep. So now I'm going to go ahead and just add pi to that because that's a valid answer for tangent, 2.094. So here's my actual answers, 2.094. So this was negative 1.047 plus pi, okay? And then I'm just going to take that answer and I'm going to add pi again, 5.236. And this was 2.094 plus pi. 
And if I compare those two answers with 2 pi thirds and 5 pi thirds, those decimals match up exactly. Mm -hmm. So tangent is the easy one uh, because you don't have to do any subtracting or remember anything weird, just add pi. Okay? And if you get a negative answer first, just add pi. So for tangent, we're going to say the second answer is the first answer plus pi. All right, and now you know everything you need to know to do the whole worksheet. Uh, if you don't finish it in class, which you might not, um, you can type these in on Desmos as well. And I think Desmos's uh, default, I'm pretty sure the default is radians. So you should be good if you need to use Desmos to finish any of these up.